And the reason why Rob Doster's wearing friars is, in case you were living under a, a, a rock all day, the news cycle today was taken over by the Big East Conference, which is where we begin. After 12 years at Providence College, seven NCAA tournaments, Big East regular season title a year ago, Ed Cooley leaving the Friars for Georgetown. For the first time in the history of the Big East Conference, a coach makes a move from one school to another in the league. Jack DeJoya, Lee Reed, get it done in Georgetown's biggest hire since John Thompson. A, a massive hire for the Hoyas, a get-right hire, and they bring Ed Cooley in from within the league. Laval Jordan, you coached in the Big East. Your immediate reaction to this news was? I wasn't totally surprised. Um, you know, I, the, the, I guess the thing, it, it's funny because I know fans think about, like, coaches talk about best job in the league and, like, who's the – like, Georgetown is – a highly desired job amongst coaches in terms of just the potential of the job. Like everybody knows. And so the, you know, and Lee Reed, I, I know Lee personally, he's awesome in terms of the athletic director. And so it wasn't a complete surprise. It's, you know, the interconference thing is just the thing that everybody's mm -hmm. uh, obviously Chris Beard to Texas from Texas tech, uh, you know, just the interconference thing, but in terms of just, that move in general, I wasn't completely surprised. You know, obviously, uh, I, I think Ed thought long and, and deep about it. And, um, you know, everybody knows the potential of Georgetown to, to and what it can be. Uh, obviously, it hasn't been that the past couple of years. But, you know, I think there's no question about what it what it can be and what's uh, the area, you know, the DMV and recruiting and, and Jordan brand and all the things that come with Georgetown. And so it wasn't like a complete surprise, but I know it does send some shockwaves, you know, on some level. The most surprising thing to me was that, this is going to sound crazy, but that he actually went through with it, right? Because in my head, what I kept thinking was, um, Ed is going to be, he's going to be intrigued by this opportunity. He's going to be intrigued by the do dollar figure. He's going to be intrigued by the idea of going to a program that was basically started by John Thompson Jr. And I think all of us here know uh, how he views uh, how he views Big Coach and how he views the Georgetown program that he built uh, back in the 70s. And I think that I, my my reaction was like, wow, is he actually he's actually going to do this? Like, I never thought that he that was, was actually going to be able to, <laughs> to like rip the bandaid off and, and say, yeah. I'm I'm leaving home. And I, I just. The concern that I have with I, I think that I, I've gone on and on about why Georgetown should make this hire, right? He he's the guy that can kind of navigate those DC recruiting waters. Um, he is a very likable man. La, Laval, you can attest to this. The way that yeah, he can awesome. kind of scheme and game plan and come up with different uh like he'll throw junk defenses at you, he'll throw offenses at you that you've never seen before. Like he's very good at coming up with stuff on the fly. Um and I think he's gonna be a great coach at Georgetown, but it's just when you go to a program that is not your home, I think we saw it with Shaka Smart when he went to Texas. We saw it when Chris Mack when he went to Louisville. Like, if things go bad, they're not going to have your back. You're just a you're just an employee as opposed to being one of them, you know. And so there's always a risk of that, but you yeah. can you can make a final four. Yeah, part of that, but Lee's proven he'll have his coaches back. I mean, mm -hmm. and so and <laughs> you got to give Ed a chance to make it work. Now it's not like. You're, you're coming in from ground zero in terms of starting. So so you, there's some rope there for, for it to, you know, everybody needs this to go well uh, from that perspective. And look, it's, uh, and I don't know how much it played into it. I know Bob Driscoll was, Ed, you know, he was at Providence for 21 years. That's Ed's guy. They, they had a new president, I think, in 2019, 2020. Um, so leadership changed changes over. Even though you're at home, that's a factor. You know, when you're in this seat, you you know the the leadership is really important and and, and you know what else it is being connected and 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 like that's an important factor in this yeah and you know what else it is like when you're when you're ed cooley in providence as the coach of providence you're living in a fishbowl right like it's not it's not to the level that coach cal is in lexington not quite that but you're still you know when you go out to dinner people notice right right i mean yeah. fancy, you, could, you could probably speak to this better than 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 so here we I go came. 
Yeah. Oh boy. Here, here we go. So can I go back to him too soon, Laval? Should I should I kept the conversation flowing a little bit more before, before I take it over but, by fan But here's what I would g- give Ed a, a, some grace is like Pete Gillen left for Virginia. Patino left for Kentucky. You know, Rick Barnes left for Clemson. Mm-hmm. For Providence. So if I'm a Providence fan, like in the history of Providence basketball, this has happened before. It just wasn't an in-conference school, if that, if that makes sense. Like, but I mean, it's I don't, know, it's upset, going to I don't know how upset people were when Rick Barnes left for Clemson at Providence, but Rick Barnes left for Clemson. Right. So here's my reaction to this news today. First off, the point about the fishbowl and Providence could not be more spot on. Um, Ed Cooley had gotten to the point where he was so much of a king in Providence, and rightfully so, and that's what makes it hurt for the people of Providence, that I have it on on good authority that, that frankly, he and his family were a little bit fatigued and turned into a lot of bit fatigued of not being able to go anywhere in public without having to kiss babies everywhere and sign autographs and do all that. Now, part of that comes with, like, you should, one would argue you should relish that, cherish that, could always go away. But that that got to be a lot. They couldn't go out w- without getting swarmed. Uh, D.C. is just different from, from that. Um, there's also the angle of John Thompson here and Ed Cooley getting to the point where in 12 years of Providence, it's not common anymore in 2023 where a guy is spending more than 12 years at a school, nor alone seven or eight. And so he got them to a sweet 16 a year ago. He had the top tier recruiting classes for a period of time. He was nailing things in the transfer portal, but one would argue what, what more was he going to do at Providence that he had not done already there. And the intrigue of a national brand, of a brand that he believes Ed Cooley is taking the Georgetown job because, like it or not, Providence fans, I know that that this frustrates them potentially, Ed Cooley believes he can win a national championship at Georgetown University. And yeah. that goes yeah. back to the resources, the commitment, the brand of the, of the program. It's not to say it can't happen at Providence College, but but that's why he is sitting in this position right now is that he he spent his time at providence he was king of the hill he did max out what more could he do there and he's at a point in his career where either it's going to be end your career there or take on this opportunity and he had always always been enamored by thompson and georgetown i remember when georgetown was struggling in november and december doing games for fs1 we come in donnie marshall and i would sit down and talk with ed and Ed would be, damn, damn, they need a change. Damn, they need a leader. They can't keep bringing our league down. They can't keep bringing our league down. He knew exactly what he was talking about when he said those things. And now he is that guy. And, and John, you're right on. Listen, for for people out there that are listening, when you're in that seat, there's, you know, obviously, you know, what Coach K did at Duke, I guess. Um, would be an example when you're the reason and the face, right? And, and so those brands like that, you know, 2019 was it when the Michigan conversation was going on with Coach Cooley and uh, they ended up hiring Jawan Howard. But, you know, if you're the reason that everything is hap- happens at the school, um, you know, when you if, if, to be aligned with those brands, at some point, you know, is is it it's it's intriguing, right? To be uh Michigan or a Georgetown or a Texas or you know an Ohio State. There's just kind of big brand, you know, not that you go for it, it just it has to fit. And obviously I think it fits with Ed and Georgetown. It's not, you know, out of the box. It is, I think it's in the wheelhouse. At and its so- best Laval, Laval and Rob, at its best, at its best, where does Georgetown rank as a program in this sport? At its best, probably at its best, probably I would say top twenty Laval. 
because I'm just I'm not convinced that they're going to be able to build that home court into a fortress. And I think in 2023, you can't win at the level that you want to be able to win without having your home court view. I just I struggle to believe that on a Wednesday night at 6 30 p.m., you're going to be able to put 20,000 people in the what what is it? The Xfinity Arena? I can't uh, Capital One Center, whatever the whatever that arena is called. It changes names like every six weeks. Whatever it's called, it changes names more often than T.O. changes Twitter profiles. <laughs> what do you think? About? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's one of it's one of the top jobs. Like, it's arguably the best job in the Big East, right? So when you're saying, when you're looking at conferences and, and again, the, the, the Providence, kind of the, the, the reason has always been the coach, right? Whether it was Patino or Barnes or, and when it was, Kino, just big personality coaches. <laughs> Those guys, Gillen, Ed, they've done well at Providence. Um, when it was Kino, and I forget who else was there. Walsh, you know, not not as successful uh, because they got diff- their different personalities. You know, Georgetown's attractive for whoever. It doesn't matter. Not that it doesn't matter who the coach is, but it just amplifies the brand of Georgetown, DC, the university itself is you know from an educational st- institutional standpoint is a huge brand and so um you know I, i'm happy for ed i know it's tough it was tough for him to 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 make a decision to do it um and i'm ca- i can't wait to see how it works out it, yeah and the last thought I, w- I would have on this is uh, among many here, here's the deal folks ed cooley is a huge reason why steve napolillo is the athletic director at providence he helped Nap get that job. Uh, when Bob Durisco announced he was retiring and this search opened up, Cooley went to bat for Napolillo. There wasn't some major disagreement between the two. Providence College did everything it could to keep Ed Cooley. They were willing to give everything in terms of resources, and the money's not that different. This move went beyond the money. Uh, but uh, Providence yeah, did every no. and Providence did everything that they could to keep him. And honestly, look, Providence fans should be pissed off. Providence fans should be upset. This is a sad day. It's a sad day for the Big East, too, to have an interconference thing. So I, I get it with Providence fans. I understand you're pissed off, and you should be. I don't think it's a sad day. I think this is a great day for the Big East. Like, just in general. Not not for Providence fans specifically. But this kind of – when it comes to what people want to see, right, they want to see their favorite teams, and then they want to see the drama. They want to yeah. see the mess. There's a reason why, like – keeping up with the Kardashians and like the, what, what is it? The, um, the, I don't first watch those shows, Rob. Or, or I, I don't whatever. know. I don't watch those shows. Yeah. I'm what referring the first to the way of, it was done, Rob. Why do you think I'm Jersey Shore was so popular, Fanna? Like people want to see the drama. They want to see the mess. <laughs> and this is like, this is, this is drama. This is messy. It, here's the thing, John. Feelings. Like it, it, how many can... people do you think are going to want to see the, the first trip that Ed Cooley makes back to Providence? We're going to do a show there. I'm telling you right now, we're going to do a live show up at the dump. The first time Ed Cooley comes back to Providence, right? We got to. Like, people want to see that. That's that's good for the national brand of the league. Like, it's not good for Providence fans. And I feel for Providence. Trust me. My favorite team, you see it right here. I got all this Tottenham Hotspur stuff up here. We just fired our coach today. So, like, I'm feeling it. I'm hurting with you guys. That's why I'm wearing this in solidarity, okay? But, like, Uh, this is good for the league, man. People are going to pay attention to it. The thing that, that when you're like ultra competitive, Ed's ultra competitive. Like when, when John Beeline, I was with Coach Beeline, when he left to go to the NBA and everybody was like, why would he do that? He's, you know, Michigan and the way it was going and, and you know, so close. There's the intrigue can get you. Like for, for Beeline, he always was, there was always a curiosity about, you know, the that level because he had done it, done it at every other level, right? And, and I think when you're Ed and, it, and it's like there's a curiosity about, you know, a place like a Georgetown. And I didn't know, Rob, if he'd actually go through with it, but, you know, that gets a coach. It's like, man, I wonder what it would be like if, and 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 then you go down there and maybe affirm some things when you get to meet with the right people and have the conversations. And it's like, okay, let's, let's go for it. Why not? Look, the Big East is on top of college basketball right now. Three teams of Sweet 16, that's tied for the most. And this move creates a ton of buzz. There's no question about that. I think I meant it as sad in terms of Providence. And look, there's no question the way that this was done, there are more than enough questions to ask Mm -hmm. about it. But it's done. 
And when Georgetown goes back up to Providence next year, that game right now is as compelling a game as any in college basketball heading into the 2023-24 season. Hey, we got Today's episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play college basketball pick'em, where you can get a little extra sweat during March Madness and win real cash prizes simply by picking player stats in this weekend's games. In Pick'em, all you do is predict whether a player will go higher or lower on Underdog's projected totals, whether that's points, rebounds, whatever. For example, if you're like me and you think Zach Eady is going to go nuts in this tournament, pick higher on his points projection, add up to four more picks, and if you hit them all, you can win 20 times your money on a single game. Underdog's slick mobile app is easy enough that dummies like Jeff Goodman have even figured it out. So go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app and use the code FIELD, F-I-E-L-D, and Underdog will match your deposit up to 100 bucks. Now is the time to get in on the madness. So remember, underdogfantasy.com, promo code FIELD. 